Next question is from Lindsay One Dove. I'm struggling with pain in my toes and arches. How do you best strengthen the feet? Okay, so uh, there are specific foot exercises uh, that you can do. In fact, we have a lot of them in our Maps uh, Prime yeah, Pro. We have short foot and piano toes to be specific. Yeah, those are two easy ones, right? So short foot is uh, those flexing aren't your easy. arch. Uh, those well, aren't, no, not <laughs> easy at all. Easy ones to call it, right, right. Yeah. So short foot's one where you, you, you strengthen your arch. Uh, piano toes is literally articulating your toes like you're playing the piano. Um, but like strengthening anything, it's a slow process. Okay, yeah. so... What you don't want to do, uh, just like working out the rest of your body, you don't want to jump in and do tons and tons of exercises uh, right out the gates. You want to start very, very slow and be patient with yourself. Um, for example, piano toes, for some people, is so frustrating at first that they, ha they literally have no connection to their toes. Mm -hmm. So you tell them to do piano toes, and all the toes move yeah. at the same Three time. Three of them at the same time, two of them. Yeah, they can't like individually articulate them. It gets frustrating. And so, yeah, definitely take your time with it. Uh, definitely start with just trying to walk around barefoot. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's like the easiest way to just like get this going in the right direction, um, just to be able to start having that sensation and, and feel uh, different surfaces. Uh, that's all going to provide feedback and, and get, you know, muscles a little bit more involved Involved in the stabilization process that maybe were dormant because of always keeping them confined in this sort of a cast through your shoes. And, and we're, we're always trying to, uh, you know, form things for our feet to be comfortable uh, to where we're not really like training them to uh, you, you know, be able to have like more strength and, and stability, uh, just like you would any other muscle. So I, I remember when, when uh, Dr. Brink really broke me down uh, and, and enlightened me on how weak my feet were. And that was something that that uh, I, I started to really work on probably, what, three, four years ago now and feel like I've come a long way. Uh, and But I do remember what that looked like when I first started. And so I first would start with uh, trying to become or be barefoot more often, right? I was never barefoot, really, and I always trained in shoes. And, and what I'd have to do before I would start training is I would take the lacrosse ball and I would roll the bottom of my feet just to kind of like wake up everything that was like completely, it felt like my foot was like seized up, you know, like that same, when she talks about pain in her toes and in the arch in her feet, I had that also. So I couldn't go from training in my shoes my whole life and all of a sudden barefoot training because it would cause these like pain in my arches and in my toes. So the first thing I'd have to do is to kind of roll everything out with the lacrosse ball and then do exercises like short foot, short foot and piano toes to just kind of wake everything up. And then after I did that, then I would try and, you know, intermittently train barefoot, which was like once, maybe twice a week. And then got to the point where I'd start doing these walks. I, and if you've been listening to the podcast for, which I think Lindsay has, so she might remember this. I used to like story this on uh, when I was talking a lot about this uh, three, four years ago, uh, where I would, I started to walk my dogs. Uh, one, one of the two walks I walked them every day, I'd walk them barefoot. So that was for me, that's only like a 10 minute little walk that I would do. And so I just started incorporating more times where I was outside in dirt on ground barefoot, and then also doing the little short foot and piano and then the lacrosse ball. And then it got to a point where that would became uh, very consistent into my routine. And then it became uh, I, where I was always barefoot training. Like I would be barefoot training three to four times a week mm -hmm. and then starting to do exercises like tippy toe squats, things that would start to really challenge and strengthen my feet. Mm -hmm. But that first you got to address mm -hmm. the, uh, the connection, the lack of mobility and just getting used to doing that. Walking on sand is phenomenal. So if you're somewhere where you can get to a beach or a park, uh, walking around on that was is really good to help strengthen the feet. But uh, like what I think Sal said is you just got to be careful, or Justin, I don't know who said it, uh, what, you just got to be careful that if you haven't been training this way or addressing this, uh, you easily can overreach and then mm -hmm. you're going to be sore and toes and, and arches hurting all yeah, the time. Yeah, one thing to add to the walking patterns and just starting with that is to notice where a bit of wear and tear is happening with your foot. So a lot of times you'll see that with like calluses or – uh, you know, like you'll, you'll just see like uh, where, where it may be like more pressure that you're applying, uh, towards your big toe versus your pinky toe, uh, and, and trying to, to, to sort of be conscious of that and, and even that out in terms of that, um, triangle of points of, con of, uh, of pressure, applying pressure. So basically like towards where, where you tie your shoelace, uh, up there versus like your, your big toe and your pinky sort of distributing that, uh, evenly. What, what a great point. One of the things, uh, after 
Brink enlightened me on this, I started to kind of look at the, the bottoms of my feet more. And I actually, I used to, I, and it's no longer there. So this is like for, uh, to give people some hope that, that deal with this. Um, I had a, a, on my left foot, I had them on both feet, but I had it more on my left foot. I had a, a massive callus that had been there my whole life. Uh, on the outside of my, or uh, excuse me, on the inside of my big toe of my left foot, mm-hmm. because that was always you were exce- pressing it there. Yeah, I was pressing it, so pronating, right? So my feet, my heels were collapsing inward, and I was always putting uh, a lot of, and, and it had just had this callus. I've had it my whole life, and just thought that's how I was. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't until I addressed all this and then I become very aware that uh, my feet were collapsing inward. And so I always try to put emphasis on rotating out. And it, it started with just the awareness of it. Like, And for me, I know we're talking to a girl here, so this just doesn't really apply, but just bear with me. You know, every time I would go pee... In the, at my house, I'd be barefoot, and I would I would rock on the outside of my feet because I would it would be mm-hmm. standing still for a few seconds and just getting that that understanding what's going on and paying attention to that, and I do that at least three to five times in a day, mm-hmm. and it's just becoming more conscious of how you walk and and how you distribute your uh, weight on your feet. 